In this video, the final week's preparation of the Range Rover for the Canning stock route, which is 1,900, give or take, kilometers off-road, one of the most demanding and brutal off-road tracks in all of Australia. It's a three-week trip, during which there will be no possibility of outside support. It's just too remote, so we've got to get this right. The rule is the Range Rover must carry all its own fuel and spare parts, which includes two spare wheels. But can we get it all done in time? Done or not, in a week's time, we leave. Established in 1996, Forex Overland is the world's first global overland expedition channel. Join us as we explore the world by four-wheel drive. This series is made in collaboration with the Off-Road History Museum, United Arab Emirates. She's been at a local workshop now for several weeks. COVID-19 amongst the staff members has meant work has been far slower than hoped. So the box is pretty much out. I've just got a couple bolts that's holding it in and then the box can technically come out. The old gearbox is coming out to be replaced with an LT95 rebuilt Parenti gearbox. That's the gearbox the Australian Army used to use in their Isuzu-powered Land Rovers. Did the cross member come out reasonably easily? Uh, yeah, a little bit of uh, uh, persuasion, but it, it did come out not too bad. Yeah. yeah, more or less. A challenge confronting us is the handbrake. It's a drum brake operating the rear prop shaft, which doesn't exist on the Parenti box. So we have to rebuild the one we've got, swap over the output flanges from the two gearboxes, and make it work. While they figure that one out, I'll be at Quick Pitch. They've donated some of their load bars, which we're going to cut to size. Then I'm off to PCS, who are helping me put this all together. The idea behind the load bars is that at least one of the two spare wheels will be carried up top, or any other bulky items we see fit to fit Today, up there. Uh, we're doing final preparations for the trip uh, on the troop carrier. Not a lot to do in the troop carrier, but quite a bit to do on the Range Rover. What we're doing is we're going to just take out and sort of repair the seat, uh, which is a bit, um, some of the webbing is a bit, little bit broken. Uh, it hasn't been for a test drive, although the new gearbox is in. It hasn't been for a test drive and a part of the proper test run. Um, we also, during the work on the engine, found some problems with the, some of the uh, heater hoses, um, water hoses. Not serious problems, but we replaced them. What are you doing? Um, putting new webbing in the back of the seat so that I can have a nice, comfortable life. One of the known faults with the Range Rover's front suspension are the shock turrets that I'm having reinforced. The top of them can actually bend up and, uh, and break in heavy corrugations. So we are going to uh, do that as part of uh, the um, preparation. But today has turned out to be a hell of a day so I was called um, problem with the Range Rover uh, the gear lever doesn't work and there is a very small but not insignificant difference between the LT95 gearbox for, on the Range Rover and the Parenti and, I, and the new box wasn't supplied with uh, a gear stick so we've had to modify the gearbox anyway so it was touch and go for a while whether it would work at all and then now finding a spare with such short notice on a probably what is quite a rare part. But they managed to sort it out. So that's, and I've been here the whole afternoon, back and forth, back and forth on the phone, and, I, you know, and finally they came back to me about 10 minutes ago saying, and it's working. So that was a crisis. Uh, that is the closest we've come to, that was a deal breaker. If we couldn't get it to work, the Range Rover wouldn't be coming on the trip. And I was thinking to myself, well, well, I'll still go. But before the afternoon is out, we are welding up the 200 litre petrol tank for the Range Rover. The rules are this. 
If you fit it in and plumb it in permanently, then it has to have certification, engineering, sign-off, etc. But if it's removable, then it's treated as a jerry can. So we have built a 200 litre jerry can that will be strapped into the Range Rover. So basically in regards to the fuel that we're going to take on the trip, we have two options. We can go with option one, which is going to be 10 jerry cans, which is a, quite a pain to transport, carry in the car, hold down, seal. And then the other option is to have a stainless steel tank that is temporarily mounted in the vehicle that we can remove without having to use any tooling. So it can be sitting in a cradle. That way we can also get past the ADR compliance for it without having to have it registered as a secondary fuel tank on the car with an auxiliary pump that is not hardwired into the fuel system. Can you explain? Uh, these are baffles, obviously. Yeah. So we've gone with basically 12 compartments inside the tank. It's yeah. Similar to what we'd have in if we had 10 jerry cans for the water, uh, the fuel that is in here. So we'd have roughly the same capacity in each one of the cells. Right. We have little cutouts in the top for the air once we drain the tank and we have small cutouts in the bottom. Yep. And that's just so we can have a correct flow rate for when the pump is sucked, we're drawing the fuel out of the, um, out of the tank. Right. But we're not having a overly large opening where the, water, the fuel will so slosh. So no surge yes. as the because vehicle Because if moves. we've got a quarter tank missing, we've got 150 kilos going around. When we're hitting corrugations, we're gonna be going around corners, we'll be full driving. Don't want this to affect the handling of the vehicle. Okay. And we don't want to have too much strain on anything in the back of the car, things like that. So that's why we've gone with the option of putting 12 baffles through here um, and not going overly large on the breather and the drains at the bottom of the tank. And then we've also gone with a ridged setup for when these get welded together. Um, they've got little notches on every single one of the um, baffles mm. so that once we have the top goes onto it, we have cutouts that go through the outer skin and actually gets welded from the outside through into the baffle. And that's on every single surface where the baffles will be touching the outer skin. So we're going to have a lot more rigidity in the tank. We won't have any movement, flex, or any dramas like that. If, if it so the flex. only edge, <coughs> it's obviously welded down here and yep. along the top. The obviously, top edge doesn't get welded. Doesn't and we'll just go through here right. once around. It really reduces but the amount. Spot, but in yep. effect, it's spot welded everywhere. Yes. So we've got a auxiliary external fuel pump that's going to be mounted to it so we're not putting a one that's submerged submerged fuel pump yeah. in it yeah it'll be only an external one yeah um that way if we have any dramas with it we can always siphon the fuel out another way and we don't have any fuel pumps or electrics touching where the fuel is so we shouldn't have any risk with fire things like that it just reduces our our risk factor for the trip okay pressure testing the tank is of course very important air is pumped into it and then it's checked for leaks by spraying it with soapy water. Well, we come to the end of our day. We're wrapping up things. Uh, we still have probably another day to go. We have finished working on the seats. We've put it up on the load bars, ready to carry the spare wheels. Tomorrow, the fuel tank will go in. The troop carrier. We've also put load bars on the troop carrier so my table can be stowed high and a few other bits and pieces that Rob is helping me with right now. These are to cure a couple of rattles uh, that I've been suffering. Not serious ones, but with a really rough trip like the canning, I've got to get it right. And what I have done is I fitted a, some load bars and a bracket for my table, there's the load bars there. But actually, at this moment, the trip is done. I, I, I can basically say that with that, it's ready to go. It's time to fit the fuel tank into the Range Rover. A cradle made of mild steel has been welded up and is fixed to the body in place of the back seat. This 200 litre jerry can will actually be strapped down. The law states that it must be removable to be classified as a jerry can. Making it a permanent fixture would require engineering approval. 
and that's really not necessary for what we're doing. Among the Range Rover support vehicles is my own troop carrier. But we have a question. Is the 3 kilowatt inverter installed sufficient for welding? Weld off the inverter in the car. And if it's successful, it means that you don't have to carry a generator. So now it's the uh, moment of truth time. Do we need to carry a bloody great big generator or will the three kilowatt inverter in the back of the troop carrier suffice. I think it did that with ease. It did? Nothing. No problem at all. No issues. That saves a lot of weight. 140 kilos off my car. Wow. I knew there was a reason why we put such a big inverter in there and it wasn't for making coffee. <laughs> Bro. Hello everybody. <laughs> Final bits of pieces on the Range Rover to do. I'm taking it now to have the, uh, the wheels fitted, new tyres fitted. I'll explain that now. Uh, the gearbox is in. There are some strange noises coming from the gearbox in second gear. I think I know what they are. Um, and I don't think it's too serious, but it is It is a little worrying because I'm not sure. Um, the new gearbox has uh, the original gear stick in it, which we've modified for the Parenti box. It does work, but it is has some, some strange anomalies with it. Um, but we can make it work. The uh, gear ratios are not the same as for the original box. It has a longer, it's almost as if all the, all the, um, uh, I'm holding the camera with my hand here because uh, the mount, uh, one of the hundred things that I have to still do to get this trip um, not only am I building the two vehicles, I'm also trying to equip these two vehicles to, to enable them to accommodate cameras. So anyway, here I am. But the, the guys at the car care did a whole lot of other work for us that has made the vehicle nicer to drive. I can feel some vibrations that I couldn't feel before but that's because we've replaced the engine mounts and the gearbox mounts um, uh, we've sorted the brakes brakes now fine absolutely really good uh, really good brakes still wandering slightly to the right but that's a bit of oil residue on the pads which will wear off uh, in time there you go city discount tires is the guys here that always do my tire stuff for me they're a great bunch of guys and they've offered to sort the Range Rover out this morning. We've got quite a bit of work to do. And this is the first test drive with the new shocks and springs and the vehicle is leaning. It's up 45 millimeters on the left and nobody can figure out why. Maybe they'll have some ideas. So the springs were fitted last, I mean I've had no chance, it's, it's, it's leaning, it's up on the uh, left and we cannot figure out why. Um, they are all new springs. Ah, uh, sorry. We, you know, it has to be a spring. What else can it be? It's, it's so, they, these are um, uh, Old Man Emu, Discovery One springs with a one inch lift. And it's too late. There is no stock that we can go and test and swap and we have to drive with us. We don't have any choice. The question of course is now we need to do a wheel alignment. Will they be able to do a wheel alignment with this much sag on the one side? We confirmed that all the part numbers correlated correctly and that there appeared to be no difference between left and right springs. But a call to Paul Marsh in South Africa, he explained that they're not all the same. 
He suggested we swap them over, and that almost completely solved our problem. I like the look of the matte black. This is going to look very strange with these big wheels on it. Oh yeah. It's going to look quite odd actually. The rim you just saw was uh, is our sixth spare. It's basically a, a Land Rover Defender rim, uh, and it'll allow us to run the tyres without a tube, but the rest of these rims, we have to run tubes. The rims are not suitable for tubeless tyres. Ta-da! And there's a lot of clearance in there, even if, that's, even if that wheel was up quite a long way. Easy. Uh, on full, full compression of the suspension, it might rub there. Maybe. Maybe. But actually, probably not. No, that's good. That's good. That's a one inch lift. I've, I guessed that that would be sufficient, and I think I got it right. The tyres I have selected are the Falcon Mud Terrain. 23585 on the original 16 inch rims with tubes. One of the decisions in preparing the Range Rover for this trip that I made was not a particularly good one, and that was that I purchased uh, alloy rims, uh, and the alloy rims don't fit without me extending these uh, wheel hub bolts, um, and I didn't want to do that. But I wanted to keep the vehicle looking original because I don't want to tick off any Range Rover, uh, Range Rover aficionados who would scoff at me if I changed the wheel rims. However, that looks fantastic and that is going to improve the performance of the vehicle on that track in a very, very big way. But I must say I did like the look of those black rims. But I don't think if I had fitted them and it actually would have cost me less had I done it, and I'd be running tubeless rims, which was the whole reason for going the alloy in the first place. I would have saved money and not be running tubes in, tubes in my tyres. So for you guys, you Range Rover aficionados, you guys who are anal about everything Range Rover, this is your fault. It's mostly your fault. The last step for the wheels and tyres is a wheel alignment. The work on the Range Rover and Troop Carrier went well into the evening and a visit to Klarman Automotive for the fitting of my new 200 amp hour Amptron lithium batteries to replace the 100s I've had in here for a while. They fit neatly in the same space we provided for them. Right, we are at I am trying to form some words in my mouth before I speak. Um, there's the car, there's the grain silo. This is a kind of an abandoned town and this was our meeting point for the convoy this morning. It's uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. We all decided that we would come our different ways separately and we would all arrive here, but the place is abandoned. We thought we would be able to get some coffee or something or even fuel, uh, but nothing here. So, um, and up to this point it's been a lot of stress, a lot of tension because so much to do. I've had to actually prepare two vehicles and um, I'm very happy with what I've done here. I know the Range Rover is running well and so I'm now waiting for them and I'm the first to have arrived. So we are now embarking on, this is the biggest trip for me for a good four to five years and um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big one. We're finally on the road. Finally. Finally on the road. It's only been seven or eight years for me to wait for this. <laughs> <laughs> there was one last thing that needed to be done to the Range Rover, which was actually done while I wasn't there, so I need to check it out. Couple of reports. The colour. Is that your fault? Well, John asked me what colour, and I said pink. As pink as possible, because you really love pink on your car. But I would love pink on my car. Yeah. It looks yeah. brilliant on here. All it's missing... I hate it, I must tell you. Yeah, that... Um, no. uh, I hope you would. <laughs> I'm thinking of the 
the rain, the color spectrum. There is no color worse than that. That's for this. what I thought. I the most well done, color. if that was your intention. And I was neon pink. Neon Green would anything would have been better. Yeah. Anything. That act sets the tone for the Canning Stock Route trip 2022. So I see it's down at the back very slightly. But there is a bit of stuff in there. Yeah, but once we've got 200 litres additional fuel, we've probably made the right choice with the spring. Just in case it gets too heavy, we can put helium in the tank. Actually, we could. Yeah. The Canning Stock Route trip of 2022 is an epic to remember one of the most memorable trips I've ever undertaken. Because if you do it too soon, it'll spin the wheels and make the hole bigger. You want to go woo, out of the hole as opposed to woo, into the hole. Let's have a look, see where they are. Okay, Ina's bringing the chainsaw up now. <laughs> so our challenge now is to work out if in fact we have enough fuel. So join us on YouTube and support us on Patreon to get the shows early.